morning welcome welcome to natasha makes uh yes it's friday what are we doing what are we doing it's friday we shouldn't be here it's friday what's happening it's good friday good happy friday no happy good for that's it that's the right around isn't it happy good friday uh to you um yes 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 yes, yes. Oh, that, that's weird there's a time delay um Hello, welcome. Yes, it is the 10th at 10 o'clock, which means there will always be a show because that is our dedicated block of the month hour. Yay! So we are here. Jane Alcock is here, which is far more important than anything else because she is the lady behind block of the month. This is this month's block. It's a stunner. You are getting six fat quarters in this one. Yes, you will be able to make two blocks. Yes. Um, so you can do a practice one and then one for best. Uh, or you can do one for a cushion. And actually, it looks really regal, doesn't it, this one? It almost looks like, um, you know, the War of the Roses. Looks like one of those yeah, sort like of Tudory, Tudory rosy yeah. type affair, um, which is lovely. Absolutely gorgeous. So well done if you managed to find us this morning. Um, yeah. Shall we crack on? Shall we? Shall we? Shall we? Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to take all of this over there look lots of hang on a hey, quick roll call J jane, I'm, I'm looking in the corner because i put jane in the corner nobody puts jane in the corner <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. she'll be out the corner in a minute um right i'm just checking because we've got jennifer we've got debbie we've got joe we've got derek good morning uh we've got steph we've got mara uh, morag we've got margaret we've got lorraine we've got linda we've got kim and we've got jackie good morning Nobody is complaining about the sound this morning, which means third time's a charm. I might have got it right this morning. They'll make a techie out of me yet. How can it be? I just need to turn things on. <laughs> right, I'm going over here. Jane's going to come on in just a minute. Bing! There we go. There you go. Here I am. Good morning. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning, everybody. Are you well, Jane? I'm very well, Natasha. Thank you. Excellent. Managing to keep cheerful during this strange and unusual times that we're in Freddie keeping myself started, to myself uh, and uh, absolutely keeping my hands clean absolutely freddie started a um a covid19 time capsule blog oh brilliant yeah well he's colored in the front page be interesting from a child's point of view because yeah. I think they're going to remember it as a great time when mum and dad were around all the time and they yep. had lots of adventures and he got to play with his sister and play in the sandpit a yeah. lot Aww. and make lego a lot well you know creativity absolutely We're learning all the time aren't we yes 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 right it's amazing what you can count as uh, <laughs> media studies yeah. when he comes on here uh and all sorts of things it's all good yeah, it's all good uh good morning gentlemen too says tim tim i do apologize yes of yes. course good, good morning. morning to our our gentlemen, gentlemen crafters. Filters. There yes. are several of you, I know, out there. That's really That's nice. Good. We need to get more. Yeah. Um, my boss at Hochanda has started to quilt. Has it? Yes, yes, yes. It's very, and I mean, at this, you know, the, the, the times we're in, it's very good for your mindfulness. Mm. Get absorbed in it, takes mm -hmm. your mind off things. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all for it. A little bit of sewing, whatever you do. Absolutely. It absolutely uh jude says good morning natasha and jane how lovely to see you good and morning. um is is with us from a thundery cyprus oh we've got beautiful sunshine here it's a lovely another another lovely sunny day oh uh, tim says he is safe at home not stuck at home what a lovely way to think of it yeah i think that's the way to be we're all safe at home yeah and i don't know about anybody else but i'm having a really good spring clean at home i'm taking out things from cupboards and finding things I didn't know I had. <laughs> Tell you what, we've had some interesting meals. Yes. <laughs> Unusual that, combinations. Yeah. <laughs> and my children just sort of look at me. I'm like, mm, yeah, it's uh, international cuisine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Karen right. says her first quilt is now in progress. Um, and oh, Deborah Moore's watching. Morning, morning, morning. And Laurie's just joined us. Morning, lovely ladies. Great to see Jane. It's always great to see Jane. Oh, Carol's with us. Marion's with us. Um, excellent. Everybody is joining us. There we go. Right, Jane, then over to you. Right, let's everyone's get on found with us. it. This is it. This is called Raspberry Cheesecake. I don't know why it's called Raspberry Cheesecake. They went through a period of designing blocks and they were all named after desserts. You'll find quite Delicious. a few of them. Um, the next one we, we're doing has got a pudding name as well. Did this come after layer cakes? I because, don't know. I think you know, it may have been before. Cake. I think it went sort of... There's a, there's a time frame and I don't know what it is, but all the blocks should be able to 
tell what their names are by their their age. Do you know what I mean? It's I think it was during the 1980s where dinner parties were all the rage. It could have been. It could have been. <laughs> Maybe even older than that. Never know. You never know, do you? <laughs> but this one's called raspberry cheesecake. You I've know done if it there in was a prawn these cocktail. beautiful, <laughs> beautiful purples and and lilacs. Um, I mean, you can do it in whatever colour you like, but the block, the, the kit will come with these colours. No templates, you'll be pleased to know. We've gone back <laughs> to everything starting with a square, which we love. Um, <laughs> quick piecing. We've got a square within a square, and we've got half square triangles, and then a straightforward plain square in the middle. It gives you that lovely starred effect in the middle there which you can have as an accent or you can use your frames. You can turn this um, triangle unit round the other way if you prefer a different look. Experiment with it. You know, it's your block, you can do what you like. As Natasha said, you're getting six fat quarters, you're going to have enough to make at least two blocks. You might even get three out if you're clever with your cutting. So you've got plenty of fabric in there to have a little experiment, you know, try it different colour ways, see how it looks. So we've got the, the first square which is your middle square and that's a plain square so that's the middle square cut at the, all the instructions all the cutting instructions are there so we'll start off by doing the half square triangle we've covered this before in previous um, blocks but you know it never hurts to go over over it again so we've got two um, squares of the background color and then two of this lovely lilac and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to um, mark the diagonal on the lighter fabric. It doesn't much matter which one you do, but I always like to do it on the background fabric. So, using oh, I should have given you my perfect five ruler. Oh, oh, just the best, mind. the most useful yeah. ruler. I think it's still in my bag from Hochanda from last night. So when I mark on a diagonal, I always start from the middle and go outwards, so I'm not dragging across the bias of the fabric. It doesn't matter what you use to mark with um, at this stage because we're ultimately going to cut on this line. So whatever fabric marker or even just an ordinary pencil will do because um, you're not going to see this line. So once we've marked that diagonal line, we're going to put it right sides together with your lilac square. And we're going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of the marked line. Excellent. So we'll go across to the machine and put my glasses on so I can see where I'm going. Rachel says she's, she's done her chores. She's joining us with a coffee. Good morning, oh, Rachel. Oh, good idea, Rachel. And she hasn't had to move, Jane. It's such good news. She hasn't had to move, which is lovely. Oh, well. Um, purple and lilacs, Jane's favourite colours, asks Susan. Could be. So, Jane, that is set up so that that end bit of the foot thing will cut your thread. Right. So if you spin that foot pedal around... That's it. Get that's there. the one. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. <laughs> so right, I'll get Otherwise, you're it. just going to sit, sit there, there cutting, cutting thread all day. That's <laughs> it. There we go. So we're going down one side, and then down. I'm doing it, chain piecing it. So we'll just go across the next one. Keeping my, I'm able to do quarter of an inch with the um, on the machine, so I know that if I place the edge of my foot against this line, it's going to come out a quarter of an inch. Jane, something very strange is going on on my Facebook Live, oh and right. I don't know if this is happening on anybody else's. But does anybody else have like a closed caption? We've got subtitles. Oh, is that just on my phone? I don't know. That's very strange. Has anybody else got that? Oh, Andrew so Atwood's right, watching. Uh, Morning. Have we actually got subtitles? Yeah, the, what is, I don't know, not that I have ever, that ever be good for the hard of hearing among us. <laughs> yeah. Maybe this is what we've resorted to because I've got the sound wrong on both of the shows <laughs> this week. It's like, right, yeah, let's can't get the sound titles. right. We'll just give her subtitles. So I'm just going to cut through those threads there that are joining that together and then we'll cut the block in half along that marked diagonal line. Apparently it's just Ooh. my end. Josh One says he hasn't there. got any subtitles his end. All oh, right, maybe it's just your phone then. Well, that's really strange. I'd love to know how I got them. 
because then if I do get the sound wrong or if we're a bit too high, a bit too low, then people would be able to have subtitles. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that'd be good. Oh, hang on, I better actually show people what you're doing. <laughs> too busy looking at the I'm just going to Sorry, press everyone. these now. So I've cut them in half, press it on the, because I want the seam to go under the lilac, I pressed it on the with the lilac on the top and then just pressing away and just you know take care at this point because you are on a bias so people have got it on their phone but not on their tv oh well that's really strange the captions yeah oh i don't how there you go you thought you'd got it <laughs> on top of it but now it's decided to do something else to you it says if it, it does happen oh josh hang on josh is on it oh josh good is on josh. the case tech, tech team's on Rem it remote tech team brilliant he says it does happen. However, if you are on mobile and watch it in the live mm. I don't know if we can turn it off. Don't so want to get in the way of your demo. That's given four half square triangles with the lilac and the ivory. It's a quick way to do it, isn't it? Yeah. It also, you know, if you cut those in half and then sew them together, which you can do, you can take the squares, cut them in half along the diagonals, put two together and sew them you've got that biased edge which could be a bit stretchy so it's i like this using two squares and doing it because you've got less movement of your fabric and then you can always give it a quick a quick mist can't you with yeah. you yes yes so the square within a square this again is quite a straightforward one and again we're going to do it with with starting with squares and um, doing it that way now you're going to have some waste fabric with this, but I'm just I'm going to show you something that you can do um, that will um, let's do it with the with the purple first. We're going to mark the diagonal across from corner to corner on all these small squares. Um, and I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about in a moment. I'll just do the one diagonal mark to start with this is quite a quick block to do actually it looks complicated but it doesn't take very long at all um, so you can you know if you wanted to make more or if you wanted to do it into a quilt it'll be quite interesting um, that would be to really see pretty. how quickly you could make a quilt actually a lap quilt would be stunning, wouldn't yeah, it, it would. out of it? So you've got all your four squares marked with a diagonal and your larger lilac square. You're going to place that on top in um, the right-hand corner with the diagonal going across the corner of that square. So that runs across that corner. So basically you're taking the corner of the square off. Now you're going to sew on the line this time. So I'm just going to put this back onto one. That's it, so that the needle's in the middle. Now, when I start sewing with this, because the danger is that if you start right on this edge here, it's going to drag it into your machine um, foot. So I start just a little bit inside, just so it doesn't pull down. Or you can use your little bit of scrap fabric and... Um, what do you call it? A leader or an a ender? A leader or ender. But um, usually I've dragged it down into the foot of the machine before I've realised that I could have used a leader or an ender. <laughs> 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 like, uh. Okay, so uh, subtitle gate. Yes. Um, we've got to the bottom of it. Well, I right. don't know if we've got to the bottom of it, but you can turn them off if they've come up. I don't know why they would come up. It's very strange. If you tap the video, there are three little dots in the top right hand side of your screen. Right. If you tap those three little dots, it gives you the choice of having captions or not. Oh, right. That's handy. So even if you're live, it gets, you get captions. Yeah. Oh, that's clever. It's really clever. That's very good because if you are hard of hearing, yeah, or if you're watching in a room and your other half doesn't want our dulcet tones. I mean, I can't right, imagine they wouldn't where want that to listen would to us be, talking. I don't know. know. Don't know. That's don't handy know. to know because I've often watched videos and there's been captions on it, and I thought, oh, how have they done that? That's clever. That's how. That's how. Right. So we're going to cut that corner off now. So I'm lining the quarter inch mark on my ruler on that stitch line, and of course, with the creative grids, you've got that lovely frosted. 
quarter of an inch on the one side. So you just line that edge up and that's easy to see. And we trim that corner off. Jan would like to ask a question. Yes. She says, um, she's watching for the first time as normally would be at work. Ooh. See, there's a silver yes. lining, isn't there? Silver lining. Uh, please, can I ask, are all the blocks finished at 12 and a half inches? Yes, they are. Yes. 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 Um, if you started from the beginning, I just said yes, they are. The first block, which is part of the sashing, is actually six and a half inches. It, all these blocks is a, a 12 and a half. We've got nine blocks in the middle and then the sashing forms a, a frame around it. Are there many of you who have missed the other blocks? Because we need to find that out to yes, see if anybody can, needs needs to we catch can, up um, some, somehow. Sort something out, can't yeah. we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right, so you can see then that you've got these little triangles left over. Now... If you like me and you can't stand waste, and I wouldn't really, if I hadn't, if I don't do this, I wouldn't bother with these, they'd get thrown away. But if you've marked your diagonal line across through the middle, if you then mark another diagonal half an inch away from that one that you've marked, let me do it on the pink, it might be easier to see, and then I'll do a close up on it. That's all right. Well, I'm just going to creep around a, at a socially acceptable distance to show you. Um, that, yes, look at this. Because that uses exactly what you have left over. Yeah. And that was a pattern that I did for Hochanda yesterday. So, so that's I really cute to wear it? here. So that's yet. an idea, isn't it, that you can do with your little Absolutely. cut offs. Um, they're half square triangles and we all know half square triangles are very versatile and you can make lots of patterns with half square triangles. Oh, Val says that the predictive text is not always the words we're saying. <laughs> oh, that could be interesting, couldn't it? <laughs> is this where I end up being rash and <laughs> trash as, as normally happens? And I'm like, oh man. Yes, it could be interesting. So if you're going to do the, the extra line, Mm. You'll sew on the line of both of those. So you sew on the one through the diagonal. Mm -hmm. All right, now Christine says, hi, good morning, stay safe. What batting or wadding would you use, please? We're going to do a whole show on that, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. I mean, there are so many different types of wadding and batting, whatever you want to call it out there. We call it wadding in the UK, batting if you're following an American recipe, but it's all the same thing because there's no difference in it. Um, we all favour our own type. I personally like a nice 80-20, 80% 80 cotton, 20% polyester, just because it reduces that little bit of shrinkage. Yeah. Um, some people like to use pure cotton and then they like to wash it and it gives it that wrinkled vintage antique look, which is lovely. I like bamboo. Yes. But that's an environmental thing as well as... Yeah, a... that's very environmentally friendly um, and gives a lovely soft 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 oh, i finished. hadn't realized as well that actually because of all the rain and everything the cotton plants aren't doing so well haven't no, done so well so actually yeah. bamboo is one of the fastest growing plants and so it's readily available it? yeah and also um you know we i used to use bamboo nappies for the kids yeah and they were fabulous absolutely fabulous and so lovely and warm as well and of course wool again wool is another natural fiber yeah. um and that that does give you a very um, nice finish and um, a lovely um, weight to your quilt mm. as well but of course with it being wool and being a natural fibre it's one of those that in the summer it stays cool and in the winter it stays warm it's, it's lovely wool it's, yeah. Yeah. it's a little bit high end price wise but I think if you're making a, a nice quilt that you want as an heirloom quilt that you want passing down then wool is a, a good investment absolutely um, right, so we've, we've sewn caught on both of those lines and again we're going to place the quarter inch mark on the sewing line, sewn line, and cut across. Well Deirdre says this is her first time seeing the blocks, well welcome. Welcome, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, and so, so we've, now, we've now got a nice little mini one, mini half square triangle that you're more likely to do something with than having a bag full of pieces like that. 
It's very true. It's very true. You stick these in a bag and then one day, you know, when you're self-isolating and you've got nothing better to do, you might get them all out and start making something. You can then make you might buy my pattern. Yes. <laughs> and buy <laughs> Natasha's pattern and make the, the little zipped pouch. Make the little zip pouch. Absolutely. Susan says she's, she's up to date with hers. So she's, she's just ordering this one. It's like homework, isn't it? It's yeah. lovely. And I saw um, somebody had posted the other day and they'd got it on their design wall and they got it all laid oh, out wow. ready with the corner patches in waiting for the sashing to go on. It looked fabulous. Oh, how lovely. So we've done the two purple squares in the yeah. opposite corners and now we're coming down and we're doing the pink. In the but same way? Yeah. Okay. Each time we're just lining it up with the square in the corner and we're sewing on the door, on the marked line. Anne says that you're a brilliant and consistent demonstrator. Well, that's and that, very nice. And that you make her feel more confident, so she says thank you. That's a lovely thing to say, thank you. Um, so the, what I can ask is, um, do, 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 do. so from, gosh, what block did we start on, Jane? Um, we took over where sewing quarter left off. We started on block six, didn't we? Was it block, block five? Hang on, hang on. We're January... We missed December's. Yeah, so it was January, it February, January, March. January, February, March, April. April. So we've done four. We're on block nine now. So nine, eight, seven, six. We started on six. Look at us doing math. <laughs> Fingers out. Fingers. Must be maths time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if you've missed any of the... So block six, seven and eight... Are already on the website they're already there www.natashamakes.com i forget some people don't actually know where to go for these blocks yeah so um if you're joining us for the first time and you just fancy having a go at this block and making cushions or whatever out of it and then using your own fabric then you can just buy um this block kit if you want to be involved uh then from block six seven eight are already on the website they're already there and we still have a handful of stock of those um, and then if you want any of the others then if you email us and then we'll have to find a way to, to sort of rewrite instructions and stuff and yeah because the blocks are out there they're traditional blocks they're not copyrighted to me they've been there for years you know the whole process of this quilt was to take you through from the very basics up and to to sort of improve your skill level basically yeah I wanted to start for beginners, people that had never made a quilt before but liked the idea of it but were always a little bit overphased by it, always looked too complicated. So we started with the very basics, a nine patch, worked up to half square triangles, quarter square triangles, three, three triangle squares. We've done a bit of template work, which I know everybody hasn't been very happy with, but we did it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> persevere, people. That's all I can say. Practice makes perfect. It's one of those things you have to practice the stuff that you yeah. like the least, the most, That's to right. get good at it, don't and you? Of course, people that were hand that have hand pieced or hand quilted for since the beginning of time, before we had rotary cutters. You know, I started before rotary cutters were around. We use templates and scissors all the time. It was the way to do it. So, you know. It's a skill level and it's an improvement. So, you know, it's not for everybody. And this is the whole point. We try things out. If we don't like it, we've tried it. We're not doing that again. So, you know, you'll find this in your, as you learn more about quilting, there are different types of quilting. There are different types of quilts, different methods. There's always more than one way to do something and you will find your preferred method. It's not right, it's not wrong. We don't do quilt police. You do what you feel comfortable with and what makes you happy because this is what it's all about. It's about feeling happy, content with your work, enjoying the process. We don't want you to feel overwhelmed and scared of doing it. We want you to be happy doing it. Absolutely. So that's why we're showing you several methods of doing similar things lots of you asking if there are still previous blocks available if you head to the website www.natashamakes.com then you will find them there if you search for block of the month then they will come up on the website you can click on watch live and today's block will be underneath there um, we keep a library 
of all of the shows that we do. They are both on YouTube, they are on Facebook, and they are being catalogued on our website as well, which is, like I say, natashamakes.com. Um, so that's where you can find them. Um, those and lots of other glorious goodies. Lovely. Quite frankly. It's getting quite a... You're getting quite a catalogue of things, quite aren't you? Quite a catalogue, yeah. I mean, that beautiful quilt that Sarah did on Monday was just... Uh, now, if you missed Sarah's quilt on Monday, you can, of course, catch up. And that was incredible value for money as well, um, because she did bulk, you know. And she has, she has the following that she can, she can bring something yeah. in bulk, which was amazing. So if you missed that one, do catch up with that. Um, and then Angie Atwood we've had as well this oh, week yeah, with as the well. Oh yeah, beautiful westerly rulers. The and Kay Fassett Fabric. Oh, it's been one good old week, I tell yes. you. So you've got all, you'll end up with all these little tiny squares. You can make Natasha's little zip pouch. I'll put the instructions for that online yeah. later. I just did a little pin cushion with oh, mine. Oh, pretty. Yeah, just a little, put them together. That's another um, orphan unit from a previous block that we, we did. So it's made a nice little pin cushion. And I mean... You can make pin cushions galore, can't you? Give them to friends. If you've got yep. sewing friends, just yep. little pin cushions, nice little gift. Uh, or you could um, put uh, some of our plastic beans in and have them as pattern weights. Yeah, brilliant idea. Make yeah. yourself some little pattern weights. So you'll make things. you'll make four of these units. I did the other three earlier because I didn't want to stand here and bore you to death making them all the same so each <laughs> time it's a little square over the corner of the bigger square sewing through the diagonal you can do the little trip with the extra half inch on the one side and cut through to to save your waist so you'll have four square within squares i call them square in a square units it's sometimes known known as an economy block i don't know why but that's another name for it and then you've got your half square triangles and your plain square. So the first row, we'll start with that top row. You take one of your square in square units and two of your half square triangle units. And in my pattern, I put the lilac against the edge of the, the square within the square. And you're going to sew one side to that one and the other side to that. So I'll do that. Um, Go back to my quarter of an inch. Find it, there it is, number three. There we are. Oh, needles come unthreaded. What you doing? What are we doing? Just come unthreaded. I bet it's got an automatic threader, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. If you... There we are. Did it first time because oh, I was talking there you to you, go. you see, and not having to concentrate on it. It threaded first time. <laughs> now, what I will say is, on my pattern, I've made sure that the lilac triangle is on the left hand side of the um, square within the square unit and that the purple is at the bottom. This is quite important. Again, once you've made your units, you can lay them out and turn them around before you start sewing them together because you might like a different option. There are other options that you can do. So, you know, have a play with the units and see what you like because you don't have to do it the same as me. Well, that's just it, isn't it? If you've got yeah, enough fabric that you can do a couple, you try it one way, yeah. try it another, and see which one you fancy putting in your quilt. Yeah. You might prefer to do the deep purple in the half square triangles and turn the unit round so that the cream is there, and that will like frame your block. This is the beauty of patchwork, I think. It's made up of units, and you know whether they're triangles, squares, quarter squares, whatever you're using, you can get so many different effects with the same units. Yes. It gives you a lovely, a lovely finish. So we're going to make this row again. We're just making sure that it's exactly the same orientation. 
if you can't see that visually, if you've got the diagram on your um, on your uh, pattern and you can't see that actually it's the same orientation, if it helps you when you're sewing, turn it round so that you can see how it goes together. It is the same, it's just upside down when you put it on the bottom row. If you can see that, that's that way and then that one's that way. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people, for visually, some people can't quite see that and they yeah. think, oh no, I've done two, to, two, two the same, it's not going to work. It's just that you're putting one upside down, but it does actually go together in the same way. But again, you know, find whichever method works best for you. If you'd rather lay all the units out into the block first and then sew it together, do that and do each row one at a time. Jane, do you remember your very first quilt and what it was? Yes, it was, um, it was a log cabin. Well, the first piece of patchwork I did was a log cabin um, and I did it foundation pieced onto um, what we call soft sewn, which is non-fusible interfacing, very lightweight. Right. And we traced it off onto the soft sewing and we did it foundation style, so the soft sewing stays in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I made it into a cushion. It was log cabin and it was... I still got it. Have you? Yeah. And Does it come out? Is it out or not? Yes, it's on a chair somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> it comes I don't know, with so many chairs. <laughs> I do. I've, I've done several talks for WIs and, and quilting groups, and it, it always comes with me because it's my first piece of oh. finished patchwork. I've got lots of other bits that I did, you know, for trying out methods. As I say, you try different things, and sometimes you think, no, no, I don't like that. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> With so, templates. <laughs> yeah. So there you are, you've got two rows the same. One's row one and one's row three. So we'll just put those to one side for now. And then the middle row. Now the middle row again is the middle square, your centre square, which is just a plain square, and then your square within a square unit. Now this time you want the purple against the side of the middle. This is to form your star shape. Just make sure you've got them the right way because it's very easy to do that or to do oh, that or yeah, get no, one I that way that. Yeah. and it's so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yeah, you're talking to and the person. And you look at it and you're like, why hasn't that gone right? So we're going to sew one to one side of the square. I had a lot of shows yesterday over at Ho-Chanda and I forgot my, my stitch and picker. Oh no. I know, I know, I know. And it just always there's always a, a time challenge to get enough samples made for those shows yes oh my goodness but luckily what i had remembered was my beard trimmer not my own beard trimmer no. obviously you know with a name like tash you've got to be a bit careful <laughs> uh, so i was just busily trying to unpick with that oh dear if I can just show you, can we do a bit of a close-up? Oh, yes, please do. We've, We've got here a, a little X marks the spot. I don't mm. know if you can see it on there. It's where that one line of seam comes there and the other line goes that way. You want to make sure that your seam line going across here just comes on the other side of that. So on the inside of the, the X there. That just stops you sewing off the point of your... Um, Square. Yeah. Just a little reference point for you. So on these units here, we sew, we pressed it away towards the half square triangle, which sometimes it doesn't want to do because there's quite a bit of a bulky seam up in that corner. Mm. But the middle one, middle row, we're going to press the seams towards the plain square. So I have the plain square on the top when I'm pressing, and then when I move it away, the seam always falls under the fabric I want it to be that's on the top. I finally got that in my head. It's taken me a while, I'm not gonna lie. It's like a light bulb moment. You think, oh, right, yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. That. This is so that when we put the rows together, because we're gonna sew the rows together now, when we come to, to line them up, you get the seams nestling. So if we go a, a close up there, Ooh. 
we can see. Jane, is this in your instructions? Because I didn't write them up this time. I've given them um, to Josh to do. I don't know. I think I might have said it. I may not have done. Okay. I don't think I've done anything about pressing actually in this. Okay. No, I don't think it says anything about okay, pressing. Okay, so play attention and watch the video back then. Yeah. Okay, that's all fine. So again, we'll line that up and we'll sew a quarter of an inch down there. So we've got, have we got any more? We've got one more block, haven't we? One more block. And, and then, then what? And then we'll do the sashing and joining the blocks together. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the quilting because there's several different ways that you can quilt it. Okay. We'll do quilt as you go method. Right. Or you can sew all the blocks together and quilt it yourself. Or you could sew all the blocks together and make it the quilt top and take it to your long arm quilter. But we'll talk about, you know, all of that in more depth when we get to it. The very first quilt I made for myself, yeah, um, the very first one I did a full size quilt with, um, I took that to be long arm quilted because I was too scared to quilt it myself. Yeah, I don't think you're alone. I'd spent all that time making it and I didn't want to ruin it by quilting it when I wasn't used yeah, to quilting. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I, um, I took it to a professional long arm quilter, which I'm glad I did because it's, a, it's still on the back of my sofa and I love it. So we've got the two rows together and then we're going to sew the bottom row on again, lining up the seams and um, doing that quarter of an inch down there. You can, of course, pin it. You know me, I'm too lazy to pin. I'm always, always in a hurry to get the next bit on. So I tend not to pin. Now, lots of you have been going for the amazing Quilters Magic Pins. Yes. Have you seen those, Jane? Yes, because you can iron over those. You can you? iron over them, but they're, they're so much easier to get in and out. And the quilting ones yeah. are really fine. They're beautifully fine, incredibly sharp. They're polished the the length of it so it makes uh, putting them in really easy you can press over the top of them but they've got a grip to them as well so they're just an absolute pleasure to use i didn't realize um in my naivety that actually if you spent more than a pound on a packet of pins it uh, was better <laughs> yeah. look what i've done what I, can you see what i've done you've just shown us how to um, how not to do it <laughs> Created a different. Um, <laughs> do we have the same <laughs> replica? Like I don't know where it is. Oh, oh uh, yeah, there will be one. If you have a little rummage over there, I'd come and get it for you, but I can't come near you. No. Um, have a good old rummage. Oh, in. I found it. Have, oh, good, because I didn't know where mine was. You can um, watch me unpick now. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, is that the right one to unpick? Hang on, whoa, 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 before you unpick, is that the right end? Yeah. Are you sure? I think so. Do you want to double check? Is it not? Do you I not don't know. I don't know. Double check. Yeah, I've got, yes it is, right <laughs> side, yeah. <laughs> now when I unpick, I unpick every third stitch. That's very precise. Keep it flat, doesn't have to be the third stitch, but around about there. Mm. Keep it flat. I don't open up the seam. I've seen so many people pulling it like this, pulling it apart and going through like that. Well, if you pull it like that, you're going to stretch it and that can distort it, which makes it difficult to then sew it back together. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's a really obvious thing. And yet, how often do we try it, to pull it You know, apart? I think the ladies that are dressmakers amongst us that have gone into quilting, that's, their, they've, that's the way they've always unpicked. And so that's, they think that's the best way to unpick. But I always lay it flat every third stitch if you can get your own picker under the third stitch yeah i think that one might be quite blunt um and you're not pulling it so much you're keeping it flat there's less chance of distortion 
Um, if you're unpicking because it's not going together the way you want it to go, my teachers, um, Chris Francis Barber Trainee, who taught me, always said, if it's still not going together after the third time, it's never going to go together. So you only unpick twice because by the third time you'll have distorted your fabric anyway and it wouldn't go together. If it hasn't gone together, you know, by the third time it's never going to go together. So Which is you, true, but you, still a bit disheartening. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, because we're so close to it and we're a little overcritical of our own work, mm -hmm. you have to make a decision. Can you live with it? Mm. If you can live with it, because usually you can, because by the time you put it together and then you say to your friend and she says, oh, that's beautiful, it's lovely, and you go, yeah, but you can never find the mistake anyway. So I mean, if, if we're talking like a few threads out, if it's majorly out, then, you know. And then I go on the back and I grab the thread from the back mm. and I just pull it. We're on a, um, we're on a mission to stop people... Um, saying how awful their work is when they yeah. give it to people. You take a breath mm -hmm. and you say, thank you very much. Mm. It's not hard, is it? But we're, we're well, when you worse. give it to someone, don't give oh, it to them and tell them it's dreadful. No. Sarah, Sarah and I were talking about this on Monday and she's so right. We all do it. Yes. Oh, it's not very good, but here you go. Oh, well, great. Thanks for giving me something that's a bit rubbish. The thing is, generally, the person that you're giving a gift of a quilt or a cushion to quite possibly isn't a quilter themselves absolutely and won't know whether it's right or wrong and if they are a quilter they will appreciate the work that's gone into it so they'll love it and they might notice the little mistake but they won't say anything because they know how, what it's like to, <laughs> to yeah, put absolutely. something together absolutely I might start a trend of making sure that one thing is always wrong in everything I stitch and, and have it as a, uh, can, you, can you find the mistake, the yes. deliberate mistake? Well, uh, the Amish actually do that. Do they? They, they deliberately is will that put a mistake in because only God is perfect. Ah, there we go. And oh, um, the Turkish rug makers as well, they'll do the same thing. If you've got yes, a, of a course. Turkish rug, there's always something that's not... Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, well, there you go. So you see, that wasn't too long, was it, to unpick and put right? But that's how easy it is, especially if you're talking at the same time as stitching. <laughs> Multitasking. Multitasking. Yeah. I'm just going to sew that little bit out. There we go. Press it nice and flat. And there you are. You've got your block, and that doesn't take too long. And as I said, you can have a play, and if you put these together... Oh, that's pretty. ...you will end up with a square here, which if you like quilting or embroidery, you've got a nice blank square to put a pattern in. Or if you watch... Or a bit of a plique or something. Angela's show. Yes, perfect for your westerly rulers. Of course. And this square in the middle lends itself nicely for a bit of a pattern in it. So, you know, you, you will have enough fabric in your fat quarters to make two i think you might even get three out of it i don't want to say that but you'll definitely get two <laughs> don't want to say it but i'm gonna say jane it. said we'd get three and we've only got two and a half um <laughs> so <laughs> definitely two. Oh, jane so there that's we whiz go. by there thank you, are. you. there's thank your you, raspberry you. cheesecake and not a calorie involved delicious delicious right so a note on arrival for this one we are still waiting on one fabric to arrive because obviously delivery is a bit all over the place at the moment um with you know world of should we just call it world events yes world events the so, situation we find ourselves oh, in. yeah absolutely so basically get easter over the way out of the way and done with she says, making it sound like such a chore. Yeah. Um, eat all your chocolates. And then um, uh, bu 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 I would hope that these would be dispatched. I would hope the order would be in middle of next week. Um, Probably dispatched by the end of the week, maybe. Yeah, I would think so. So I expect um, to get it. Yeah, we have to take into account, don't we? Our fabulous postal service are doing their best, but obviously they're running under different constraints. And so... 
ours has got staff taking a little bit longer so yeah. shutting they've, yeah. they've got days that they shut so you know we're yeah. trying to get stuff out as fast as we can but there are a, a few little a few little hiccups along the way that we have yes. to navigate so do bear with us so i would say um hang on, what day is it today so basically you should have it by next Monday, not yeah. this coming month, not Easter Monday. Not Easter Monday, because there's no postal service anyway on the no. bank holidays. No. So possibly next Monday. That's, yeah, that's But what don't I worry would. if you don't get it on Monday, because it will get there to you. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just just allow that. And then, so next time is the last block. Block. Yes. My goodness. And then after that, we do wadding. And then after that, we'll do we do binding. binding so this is what i love about jane she's not just going to go and then you bind it thanks bye bye um you're no, actually going to go through how to bind there's several a couple of different ways that you can bind it so we'll go through both methods and you can decide again you can decide which you prefer amazing jane thank you thank you thank you so you're very much welcome. um bu -bu 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 -bu, what else do i need to tell you i'm not very organized this morning i got home uh, a bit late last night so um Take a look at the website, take a look at Angie's shows, take a look at Sarah's shows this week. So this has been a three show week. Um, and yeah, if you've missed out on something, don't don't miss out. What, what we have on the website is what we have there. So, you know, if you fancy getting yourself a new quilt, then Sarah's is beautiful and only exclusively uh, available here at Natasha Makes. And uh, I'm going to add some new kits over Easter because, you know, it's Easter and we can. Yeah. Um, and next week should see the arrival of some fabulous new fabrics, which I'm very excited about. And Jen, I need to talk to you about because okay. I feel a quilt commission coming on. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, and what else? What else? What else? If there's anything else you guys want that I don't stock, let me know and I'll see if I can get it in for you if there's anything that you need um mm, 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 what else what else what else um i'm just trying to think what else there is i will load the patterns that i did for hochanda just the patterns if you would like those nice. um so that you can get Is just those instructions <laughs> oh and the, yeah so that was that was the offcuts of the cushion that i did yeah. these the snowball cushion so i'll load those and oh yeah that was the other thing how could i forget victoria pete has oh, yes, yeah her slouchy stop. door yes. stop so if you suddenly realize that you've got well especially now that we can actually open doors uh because it's sunny enough outside yeah. you might not be able to go through the door but at least you can open it <laughs> um, uh, yes if if that is causing you a few problems uh, with slamming doors and stuff yeah. then the slouchy door stop is perfect we've got a whole load of the um upholstery end of bolts at amazing prices and you'd yeah. only need a half meter of that so it's only like five say. six quid whereas yeah. it should have been 60 pound a meter for wow. most of these fabrics so do take a look on the website for that as well um yeah and somebody asked the other day the best thing to fill the doorstep stoppers with I would go for the plastic beans that are on the website for the simple reason that door stoppers get dirty and you can then wash it with the door stoppers it, with, with, the, the with the beans in, in wow. which you can't if you fill it with rice or lentils or anything no. like that. <laughs> Soak up the moisture. Yeah, in you, you uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Soup inside your back. Yeah, 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 uh, and possibly a weevil or two. Yeah. So that's what I would recommend. And for those of you who go, but Natasha, you say that you're eco-friendly and da 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 da. These are made from uh, plastic that would otherwise be thrown away from industry. They are melted down and repurposed, so they are not put into landfill. They are not put into waste they can be washed they can be reused and if ever you decide to get rid of your gorgeous door stopper um, then just wash them and reuse them in another project good idea there you go lovely i think that brings everybody up to date jane thank you so much you're very well um see you on the 10th yes awesome let's hope awesome. we're not still locked down by then <laughs> Just I, stay inside, everybody, and wash your hands. That's it. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay she on says, the sofa. To Natasha's house. Never mind. Yeah, but you've <laughs> been in lockdown, so it's yes. All... I've been isolated myself until I just came to Natasha's. So, so it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Um, thank you ever so much for watching. Have a wonderful Easter. I have to go and build a Lego robot now and walk the hard dogs. life. Yes. And uh, so, yes. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful Easter. I will see you Monday as normal. Stay and, um, safe. Yeah, absolutely. Have a good one, everybody.
Bye-bye.